What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and today I'm going to be giving you an updated guide for the Infected Broodmother. Now, we've updated every boss guide so far, with the exception of the ones that can't be resummoned that are one-time fights. I didn't feel the need to redo those guides, and we're here with the final guide today, the Infected Broodmother. Now, this trophy, of course, is, is just for when you've beaten her a few times, you don't need to start with that. <clears throat> the things I am going to recommend for this build are in this chest right here. First, we have a Toenail Scimitar. This is the best weapon for taking on the Infected Broodmother. The shield we're going with is the Ladybird Shield. The reason we're choosing this over the Fire Ant Shield is because the Fire Ant Shield's effect doesn't stack with the Fire Ant Armor, so you might as well get the special effect from the Ladybird Shield instead. In terms of armor, we have bulky Level 9 Fire Ant Helmet and bulky Level 9 Fire Ant Leggings, with a chest plate which is termite armor which is level 9 sleek you're gonna want these all level 9 for maximum defense the sleek effect on the termite armor is going to slow her down massively and then having these two pieces of fire on armor gives you good defense but also inflicts corrosion on her reducing her defense which is very useful the trinket we have is the giddy goop there are a bunch of trinkets you could use here but my personal favorite new trinket in the game is the giddy goop you won't be able to use this if you're playing multiplayer however because this will actually hit your friends so if you are playing multiplayer i'd probably use the fresh mint trinket if you have it or i would go for something along the lines of thor's pendant obviously always a good choice then for the meal we have spider slider of course for that increased crit chance you want to stun her as much as possible we have 30 beefy soothing syrup this is just your healing item we have the sticky soothing syrup this is going to give you passive healing just like bandages do and then finally the moldy hoagie which you're gonna need if you want to summon her so we're going to equip all of these items just like so i want to sleep Make sure you do this in the petal bed. This can be unlocked with level 5 of coziness. You'll notice when I sleep, I get some new buffs, which are down here. We have comfy defense. You can't see because of my face. Comfy defense. Sleeping in a luxurious bed gives you an all-day boost to your defense and comfy energy. Now, the energy one reduces your exhaustion time by 10%, and the defense one increases your defense resistance by 10%. So you're going to want to get both of these in order to fight this enemy. I would highly recommend that you sleep so that you get both of those buffs. You need to get level 5 coziness to get the petal bed, which can be a bit of a pain to get, but by the time you get to the infected broodmother, you should have done that. Now we are, of course, going to run this guide on woe, because that's just how we do. Bugs ignore players needs to be off. Creature health scaling on 1.2x. Player damage is going back on. I'm not going to do hunger, drain, obviously. There's just no need to do it. Important to note, the Infected Weevil mount isn't going to boost your damage against her. The Infected Broodmother mount will, but you'll need to have killed her a few times in order to get that, so we're not going to use that in this fight. Just run past all the bombs on the way in here. There will sometimes be some Infected Weevils in here, which you've got to watch out for. Doesn't look like there are any right now. Do not drink this water. Not a good idea. Right, let's cover mutations now. Blade Master is going to increase your stamina recovery rate. It's also going to massively lower her attack by about 20% whenever you're hitting her. Coupe de Gras gives you a 5% crit chance, which is very, very useful on top of the Spider Slider and the 1% default. You'll have an 11% chance in this fight to crit at any moment. If you decide to use any additional smoothies, like Liquid Rage, you'll do more damage, or the crit smoothie will give you an additional 5%, taking you up to 16% total. We have Spice Safety, which is going to increase your defense against all of her attacks. Then we have Corporate Kickback, which makes it so when you parry, you actually get the ability to lifesteal sometimes. It's only about a 5% chance to occur, but it's really, really good, and it bypasses all of her healing debuff effects, so this is one of the best ones to have. And for the fifth and final mutation, I am going to run Shocking Dismissal, which is one of my personal favorites to use. This is going to give an electric attack after parries, and it's really, really powerful, and I really like it. In terms of other mutations you could use, you could use Trapper Peeper if you do have it stage three. I'm not going to be using it, mostly based on the fact that I know most people fighting her won't have this unlocked. You could use Cardio Fan if you're really struggling with stamina, although I don't think you need it if you're using Blade Master, to be honest. You could use Meat Shield for additional HP, Parry Master again for additional stamina, Buff Lungs for a bit more stamina as well, although Buff Lungs would be bottom of my list for stamina mutations to use here. You could also use the Mansterious Stranger to summon the Mant during the fight. He will provide a good distraction against her. If you're playing with other people, I recommend uh, you probably want to use Battle Buddies so you don't end up killing each other. So before we start the fight here, we're going to pop our Spider Slider and then we're just going to summon the Infected Broodmother. The most important thing in this fight is keeping her out of the water and towards the edge of the arena. 
We are going to stand in this spot over here for the majority of the fight, as this is the safest spot. But for stage one, we don't need to be there. You'll notice I managed to unequip my shield a lot. The way I'm doing this is I am using the Y key. I have it bound so that when I press Y, it equips and unequips my second slot, which happens to be my shield, which is why I have it on the hotbar. So you can see I can parry, unequip the shield, and then go straight in. The reason you want to unequip your shield is because you're going to do more damage with your shield unequipped. And I just missed a parry because I'm trash. Um, yeah, you do more damage now with your shield unequipped. Your shield being equipped reduces your damage by 20%. So you want to have it as unequipped as often as possible. You'll also notice she is really, really slow. The reason for that is the combination of the Giddy Goop and the Termite Armor slows her attack speed down massively and makes this fight much slower. It is going to make it a little harder to parry, so if you're not as confident parrying her on a slower speed, just pull out your shield and just hold it down. You can see here I am taking a little bit of damage. It's fine. We're just going to pop a bandage and a sticky soothing syrup for those regen effects. I'm not too worried right now. We have the right mutations on. We have everything we could possibly need. She will also be slowed down on getting up um, from her first phase. And second phase, like in between phases, she's slowed down massively. That hurt. You want to not get hit by those bombs. Uh, we need to stand over here for that. But yeah, she'll stay down longer, which gives you more time to parry. Um, she was meant to drop a bomb there, but I don't see the bomb that she dropped, which is weird. Uh, but we're just going to stand back here, uh, and we're not too worried. You need to be very careful of a few things. One of those is the scream attack. If you can't see her, just hold your shield like I did just then. That way, if she does do a scream, you don't have to worry about it hitting you, because that is going to massively reduce your damage that you deal and um, yeah, it's just you don't want to get hit by the uh, screams. I am missing a lot of parries here, but even though we're on woe, I'm still not taking much damage, so we're completely fine. It's because she's so slow, I'm really um, not fully used to her being so slow. But it's pretty easy to get used to after a while. You just have to be very, very patient and not rush your parries, which is definitely something I've been doing during this fight. So let me try to relax and not rush my parries. How is that not a parry? Excuse me? See if I can actually get some parries in for once, eh? Okay, she's gonna... So I saw she was screaming there, so I re-equipped my shield and just made sure to block that scream. We don't want that damage debuff. It massively reduces your damage and means that she's gonna out-heal most of the damage you're doing because of the healing effect that she has. She's behind me, so I'm just gonna parry that. As you can see, stamina recovers basically instantly with Blade Master, so there's nothing to worry about there, which is always nice. And we're just doing damage. She's about to scream, so I'm gonna switch to my shield. We're just gonna hold block. Does that stun me for a couple seconds? Sure. Is it better than getting the attack debuff for the next minute? Absolutely it is. How is that not a parry? That was the most obvious parry I've ever seen in my life. The game is just scamming me here. Um, but stage two is done, and we're on to the third and final stage, which is, of course, the hardest stage. If you want to keep your shield equipped the whole time, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm unequipping it just to speed things up, because um, I will be taking a little bit of damage, but obviously it is just mitigating most of the uh, effects here um, with the shield. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I can't see anything. It's whoa, but we're not really struggling too much. Do you know what I mean? Just got to get those slow debuffs in. Yeah, once you've got that Termite Dust Cloud in, you should be completely fine. I'm taking a bit of damage here. You've got to be careful because once the first attack of some of these combos hit you, you're stunned to the point where you can't block any of the attacks. So you do have to be very careful with that. You can get a full combo in on the 5p attacks in between the 4th and 5th attack, I believe. Uh, if not a full combo, then you definitely can get at least um, 2 of the 3 attacks in. So if you're looking to do more damage, that's definitely something you should do. Um, I'm just going to pop a bandage to refresh the effect. I'm also going to pop a sticky soothing syrup just to refresh it, get that passive healing going. Those effects are really useful in fights like this. Um, especially when we've got such a permanent healing debuff, it's really nice to have. We're just going to hold down our shield on these quicker attacks, just so they don't hit us. And then on the slower attacks, we can try to parry, purely for the reason that we get um, extra effects, which are going to be more useful from parrying, like Shocking Dismissal and Corporate Kickback. But as you can see, there's no issues here whatsoever. It is relatively chill. Obviously, the infected gnats are going to come in um, because we're in stage 3. And those do heal her, and they can damage you as well, but they're not really much to worry about. Uh, and like I said, just stay in the area that I'm in here. It keeps... Oh my god, that hurt. Focus up for a minute. 
We're fine. That one hurt a lot. That was one hit, and that did that much damage. Okay, wow. Whoa, difficulty is no joke. How did that do that much damage in one hit? I'm so confused. But yeah, the infected gnats are coming in now, but they're nothing to worry about. We're just ignoring them. The reason we're standing here, it keeps her out of the water. Uh, maybe she crit me. Maybe that's why. When she walked backwards through the water, maybe she jumped on me and crit me. That's insane damage for one hit, even for low difficulty. She must have hit a crit or something. Um, but yeah, we're just going to avoid the water for her so she doesn't get those effects. And we're staying over here for us because it avoids all the bombs like she just did. Then she did the bomb attack and you saw that none of them hit me. I pulled out my shield there and it's not pulling it out for some reason. Which is really annoying. There we go. But your stamina will take a long time to recover if you don't expend it using a sword. So if I expend stamina by blocking then um, it's going to take a lot longer to recover purely because Blade Master only affects your stamina recovery rate if you, you if you run out of stamina while swinging your sword. So if you're sprinting around the arena and you lose stamina, it's going to take a long time to recover. So that is one uh, advantage if you wanted to run something like Cardio Fan, for example. But uh, it's not something I would personally use. As you can see here, I'm not really trying that hard and um, I have 11 stacks of healing debuff. We're pretty chill. I nearly died once, but I think that was because she crit me, to be honest. I can't imagine why else I would have taken that much damage from a single attack. It's a fairly chill boss fight. There's nothing really to worry about. It's just the infected broodmother. Nothing too crazy. Obviously, the termite armor massively helps here, and the giddy goop. Like, she's so slow. She's basically in slow motion uh, at this point. And I've been on my knees about 20 times during this fight and um, haven't had to worry whatsoever. There you go. There's the infected broodmother. She gets smoked. Easy peasy. Don't forget to peep her. And then don't forget to obviously switch to Dissection Expert before you loot her. Just like that. Um, we got some decent drops there. Nothing too crazy though. That's going to call it for the Infected Broodmother Guide. Nice and easy, nothing to worry about. A very easy boss if you have the right loadout, just like this. And uh, yeah, you just got to learn and practice. And this is something that it takes a lot of uh, work, is you've got to play the game a lot. If you want to get good at these mechanics and learning to parry and all the patterns, it probably took me 10, 15 attempts the first time I beat her uh, when she very first released. But you've just got to get those mechanics down, learn all of her combos, and you'll get there eventually. And you should be able to all beat her very, very easily. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. And I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.